I'd like to start with a couple of um, good knight versus bad bishop positions and uh, some some real classics. I think it's incredibly important that we look at these classic games uh, because these ideas recur over and over again. So we really must go back to the basics to understand these really well and they can inform our decisions in our own games. So the first game I'd like to look at is Sadie against Fisher from the US Championship 1963-64 it was over played over New Year and this is the US Championship where Bobby Fischer scored 11 out of 11 unbelievable performance this is the final game the 11th game so he's already on 10 out of 10 and he's got to win this end game to get to a hundred percent now let's have a look oh by the way I forgot to say um, do have a chessboard, a proper, proper chessboard with nice wooden pieces at your side so you can analyse from that rather than analyse uh, analysing from the graphics board. Um, you're going to have to do some work here as well. OK, so the position they've arrived at. If we look at the pawn structure, you can see it is absolutely symmetrical. So from that, you'd say it's odds on a draw. And actually, objectively, this position probably is a draw. But it is very difficult for white to hold. Now, why is white at a disadvantage? Well, it's this bishop. It's fighting against this pawn. Hang on, let me have a quick slip T. That's better. Um, yep, it's blocked in by this pawn. Well, not completely blocked in, but that pawn restricts the bishop's movement. It's not that this bishop is particularly bad, actually. You know, as we can see, it has very free uh, diagonals here, but there's nothing for it to hit, actually. There are no weaknesses in, in black's position. Um, and as we'll see, as we, as we saw in the, in the Troitsky study from 1924 in the introduction, it's the squares either side of this pawn which are potentially weak. Now, this square, for example, can be covered by a pawn advancing here. It's not so bad. And this square can be covered, on, let's get rid of that one, by a pawn coming here. Um, but as we'll see, it's, it's that square which, which is really the critical square in the position and black can try and exploit that. If there were a white squared bishop sitting here, for example, then I would say this position is, is completely equal, as long as the king can come up and defend this pawn very quickly. But that would be a far more harmonious position for white, because a bishop here would cover these squares, and the pawn covers the dark squares very efficient indeed and there will be no way, way in for black's pieces first things first what does black do how can black attempt to win this position very very difficult to see how he's going to break through first phase is you almost always conduct these end games in phases first phase is to improve the position of the knight now you have to imagine where would that knight like to be I often give this position to uh, my my pupils, my students, um, and when I say, "Well, where would you like your knight to be?" they kind of go, "Yeah, e2." <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, that's not really going to happen. Um, and again, you know, you can pick a square in in this side of the board, and it's not going to get there. So, a, a square on the black side of the board, where would you like that that knight to end up? Well, I would say on one of these squares is going to be best. Now, if you come straight to d6, it's not really putting any pressure on on uh, white's position because those squares can be covered by the pawns. So I would say either c6 or e6. Fisher went for e6. 
now this is a definite improvement and again it's to do with the pieces working efficiently when the knight was on f6 it only looked at white squares well the pawn is already covering a white square but when the knight is here it looks at black squares and the pawn looks at white squares so you can see it's a very efficient placement of the knight and of course putting the knight on e6 ties one of white's pieces either bishop or king to the defense of the d-pawn that's good news if you put the knight on c6 it does the same job but it's it's more limited because it's this sector of the board where black ultimately wants to be playing black needs to be able to break through with his king and it's not going to happen on the queen side because it's too narrow white can cover that too easily with his king and, and other pieces whereas on the king side there's greater space and that's where black must be looking to break through okay so white protects the d-pawn so phase one is over now as I said it's going to be all about a breakthrough here black can't do much with the knight alone he needs the king but the king also has problems breaking into white's position in order to have a chance of breaking through you need to gain space so you need to advance your pawns <coughs> on the king side and this is very important it's only by gaining space with these pawns that black can hope to break through. So now the king comes forward. Okay, so white tries to organize a defense. So he's covering these squares. And this is a, a more efficient use of the pieces, you could say. Because that pawn covers those light squares and the bishop covers dark squares. So there's a kind of barrier that white is setting up here. And Fisher continues, getting his king in. Yeah, fine. And white is just waiting. White has just gone completely passive here. And the pawns advance. Now, Fisher starts to manoeuvre a little bit here. Um, there's a bit of toing and froing goes on. I imagine that there was time pressure at play here. Um, possibly from both sides, but I imagine only from white. So... Fisher is just manoeuvring for position at the moment. You know, he might be thinking about playing a knight in here, forcing a king and pawn ending. That's not possible at the moment, actually. Let's, let's just check that out. You should always look to see if you can simplify. Check. Now, white must exchange because that g-pawn is on prees. Now, capturing with a pawn would get black nowhere. But... In this position, there's a threat to play g4 and to open up the position. And with black's far advanced king, things are looking good. But it's not just, it's not going to work. And after g4, g3. And the king must go back and it's going to be a draw. Um, so, yeah, don't throw it away so, so easily. Okay, so there's more shuffling about goes on, and finally, black is making progress here. Now, this starts to look good. He's gained space with his pawns. Very important. And now he's going to look to break through. Now, along the way, you know, white does have improvements here. Um, but I just want to show you the rough scheme of things, what black is trying to do. And then actually I want to go right back to the beginning and show you one really big improvement that white has. G4, this is the breakthrough. And now there is a clear threat for black, and that's to play G3. The bishop retreats somewhere, E1 or G1, and knight H4 takes pawn on G2. So because of that, white is forced to exchange... Black wins back the pawn, of course. And now you can see, having knocked out 
that pawn on f3, the e4 square is no longer covered by a pawn. And now we can see it's going to be easier for black to break through. Now, at the moment, the e4 square is covered by the king. But by combining threats to the pawn on g2 with the threat to come in on e4, black can affect a breakthrough in this position. Let's just see how he does it. And again, notice, if there were a white-squared bishop, then you'd be able to cover this square very easily. A black-squared bishop, it's not efficient because it runs on the same colour as the pawn, and that makes these squares weaker, the light squares. OK, let's see how Fischer finished it off. OK, king to f5, and now he's going to try and shuffle the knight round with the king to attack the g-pawn. Um, king came back to d3. Well, let's, let's see what would happen if king f2... Um, I think that, let me see, yes, knight f5 looks good, doesn't it? So we're attacking the d-pawn, bishop defends it, and now the knight swings in, and it's ready to come to d1. The king's going to go back, and it, it's all over. I mean, in fact, this position is tzutzang. So, for example, if the bishop moves, then knight check and that pawn drops and if the king moves back to g1 well if it goes to e2 then the g pawn is on freeze and if it goes to um, g1 that looks pretty miserable doesn't it um, you could even play a very simple move like f3 I imagine and takes and the king comes in here, and we're going to take some pawns very quickly with something like that. Um, I dare say there are going to be many other ways to win this position as well for black. Um, so let's go back to the game. So after the check, the king returned to, to uh, d3, and now the knight swings round, and it's going to attack this pawn from one of these squares, and it's going to be all over. Knight h4. Yes, the problem is that because black has gained this space, white cannot now go in for the king and pawn ending. So, for example, here, king comes in, and we trade, and the king just cuts back and grabs the d-pawn, and it's all over. It's all to do with space. Okay, let's go back. So, a5, and Fischer took the pawn, and now it's all over. Obviously, you, you can see that with the pass pawn, yeah, black wins very easily. Um, I don't think we need, need to go through <clears throat> to the end of the game. OK, so it's good to recognise that in this position, black still does have winning chances in spite of the symmetrical pawn structure. But it's all to do with bishop that is on the same colour square as that pawn. Now, how could white have tried to save this game? Well, I think white should have played more actively. He was far too passive, allowing black to, to conquer all that space with his pawns on the king's side. Um, I think in this position, the best idea is to play g4. And in that way to, well, it's a preemptive strike to prevent black's pawns advancing. Now, you'll notice that that pawn is on the opposite colour square to the bishop. Again, it's about efficiency. So the bishop covers the dark squares and the pawn covers the light squares. Now, if black offers to exchange off that pawn, well, I don't think white should do it. I think white should basically erect a barricade of pawns on the light squares and advance the king behind it, maybe settle the bishop on e3. And in that way, I think white should be able to hold the game. 